بسم اللہ والحمد للہ السلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول اللہ مباد رب شاہلی صدری وسلی عمری واہل العقدم السانی اف قولی السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر برادرس ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ وی آر اسٹارٹنگ اے نیو سورہ وچ از کالڈ سورہ النجم اٹ ہیز سکسٹی ٹو آیاز اینڈ جسٹ لائک ایوری نیو سورہ وین وی اسٹارٹ ویل گو تھرو اے بریف انٹروڈکشن آف دا سورہ دس سورہ النجم از Uh, number 53 in terms of order of Quran, it is believed to be revealed in Makkah. Um, as I mentioned, it has 62 ayahs. It gets its name from the first verse where there is a reference to the for, to, uh, falling stars. And we'll discuss about this in a little bit. Um, and here, um, there are different parts if you divide it into almost, let's say, four parts. Uh, Uh, for uh, broader topics in the surah that are discussed. The first one is about the divine affirmation and the revelation that this revelation is truth and it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was um, bringing in front of the Quraysh and in front of the people is coming directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with truth. And then there's uh, challenges to the false beliefs and all the creativity um that the disbelievers had uh, were were inventing at that point in time and you know being creative in their own minds and saying things that were not true and then the important point about accountability um which is in the third part inshallah we'll go through today how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish accountability and the day of judgment and why the day of judgment is so important and our belief in afterlife is so important in line with believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to also believe in the day of judgment and these two things cannot be separated we'll have a detailed discussion on this and um the last thing is about the sovereignty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um and how we should submit to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's start our discussion for today's lesson a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the outcast, the cursed one. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Sorry. Starting with ayah number one. Wan najmi idha hawa. By the star when it goes down. And this is a starting point. And as I mentioned earlier, that the name of the surah is coming from the first word, Najm, which means a star. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by the star. Uh, and, and stars, we know that, you know, they had they had significance, especially during the time of Arabia, because people, you know, they were living in the deserts and they used to gaze at the sky and look at the stars. They used to get their um navigations around it as well like when they used to travel during night they used to see the stars and then determine their ways which way they have to go um as well as there were some beliefs that you know what a falling star me star means and you know they used to make wishes and all of those things that are also present today in some parts of the world but obviously they are not true and we know from our knowledge of quran the falling star is used by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shoot the shayateen and to kill the shayateen who are trying to go up and check so this also tells us this is a defense uh, defense mechanism of protecting the revelation of protecting the knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has from shayateen as well so by the star when it goes down ma zalla sahibukum wa ma gawa not has strayed your companion and not has he erred so the there is no error in this revelation there is no uh it's not like because one of the beliefs and of course the 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 disbelievers at that point in time were trying to bring everything against the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they used to say um that he's getting this revelation and this quran and this knowledge by the study of his stars and these stars uh, and there is a jinn who possesses this knowledge and he's the one bringing it to the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they were making all sorts of these um wrong accusations so the companion your companion meaning the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has not strayed and he has not erred meaning he has not made an any error he is in clear truth he is getting the revelation and now we'll get into the details of how he received the revelation and what he saw and why what he's saying is is truth and you know he himself is believing it because he has seen certain things and we'll go through the details some very interesting details on this as well 
Wabayantiku Anil Hawa. And not he speaks from the desire. It's not like, you know, because at that point in time, people who were worshipping gods and stone gods and all of that, they were trying to fulfill their worldly desires. So here, the point is, it's not that he's making it up. It's not like, okay, so he's thinking now I will, uh, you know, uh, say this verse and create this verse and say from his will and, you know, um, um, so this is, it's not like that. He's not a poet. A poet, a thought comes to him. He's happy. He's sad. He's writing accordingly, all of this. So this is all nonsense. And they're saying uh, against the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is not speaking from his own self. This revelation is coming from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In huwa illa wahyu wahyu hiya. Not it is except a revealed revelation to him. So whatever he is bringing is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has been revealed onto him. There is nothing coming from his own desire. Allamahu Shadidul Qawa has taught him the one mighty in power. And now this is where uh, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam, is being referred to. He is mighty, he is powerful and his power. So even when he's bringing the revelation, um, it's normally what happens is when you're doing a long journey or something, normally people would, you know, get tired or anything. No, he doesn't. He's so powerful. He retains that energy. He brings the revelation in its truth, in its uh, in its entirety without any uh, element of tiredness. He's powerful and he's mighty as well. Zu Mirra, Zu Mirra, Fastawa, possessor of soundness and he rose. And that's how, you know, he's he 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 has that soundness. He has that firmness when he's bringing the revelation that nothing gets distorted. He doesn't get tired. And then he rises above. While he was in the highest horizon. And we know it from the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he heard um, the word Muhammad, somebody calling his name. He looked and then another Muhammad, he looked up and then there he saw um, Jibreel, uh, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he was, you know, with all his wings spread, he was almost like covering the horizon and he was rising above. That's how he saw him. Thumma dana fatadalla. Then he approached and came down. Slowly, Angel Jibreel was descending from the sky. Fakana qaba qawsaini aw adna. And was a distance at the two bow lengths or nearer. So, you know, when you have the bow and arrow, the, the part, the starting and the ending. So the he he continued to descend down uh, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, until the distance was of almost of two arrows. That was the distance that was left or near it. So he came down really gently near to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And obviously the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi, 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 he is himself witnessing, he's seeing. So imagine his belief in this revelation, his belief in angels, because he was made to see so that he gets his belief. And, you know, when he's preaching it to uh, the people. So he revealed to his slave what he revealed. And then the revelation was um, brought down to the Holy Prophet. Not lied the heart what it saw. So they, it's not like, you know... Um, um, it's a matter of a heart or it is a feeling that was came. No, it was something that he, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was looking. So he was totally, he had that conviction uh, when he was um, sharing this revelation or sharing Quran with people. So he had that conviction because it is something that he saw and seeing, you know, they also say seeing and believing, although, you know, we also believe in the unseen. But the point is, when you see something, it gives you the next level of belief because, you know, you have witnessed it in front of you. So it's it's not like he's he's lying or making it up or, you know, his heart uh, or coming things are coming from his heart. No, he is, you know, he's he's seeing it, which is why he has that level of belief. Then will you dispute with him what about he saw? So now you guys are opposing the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he brings the revelation to you. And you're trying to dispute with him based on the thing that he has seen. It's not like he has heard from something. It's not like first person told him or, you know, he was, he dreamed about it. No, he was, he saw it. So how can you even dispute this? You know, so for example, if somebody says, yes, I saw a bird over there and he's seeing that bird. And then someone says, no, 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 what you're saying is not true. He'll say, no, I've seen it. So, you know, it cannot be disputed. He, he has it in front of his eyes. Um, there is 
also uh, a very interesting hadith. Uh, apologies for uh, the the words on the tile, but I will try to take uh, uh, follow it through. I hope you guys can see the pointer. Um, this is about also the journey of Miraj. So when the Holy Prophet was made to ascend into the skies and he made that journey and here is the details of that journey, he saw a lot of things and he was he saw those things, which is why he, you know, his belief and you cannot argue with him with what he's talking about, about, you know, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Quran. So let's go through the details um, related to this ayah. Uh, which is then, will you dispute with him about what he saw? And now we are getting this description from the Sahih Hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I wanted us to go through it because it this also firms up our belief. The details, when you hear them, when you listen to them, when you read about them, they also give um, uh, um, um, Iman and the sense of belief to everything that we are going through. So let's go through this. Al-Miraj, that is the ascent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the heavens with his body and soul. So it wasn't like he was dreaming. He was actually carried there. Bir-ruh wal jism, with his body and his soul. Narrated Malik bin Sasah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, while I was at the house in a state midway between sleep and wakefulness, an angel recognized me as a man lying between two men. A golden tray full of wisdom and belief was brought to me and my body was cut open from the throat to the lower part of the abdomen. And when my abdomen was washed with zamzam water and my heart was filled with wisdom and belief. al Burak, a white animal smaller than a mule mule is like a donkey or a bigger than a donkey was brought to me and i set out with jibrail angel jibrail when i reached the nearest heaven jibrail said to the gatekeeper of the heaven open the gate the gatekeeper asked who is it he said jibrail the gatekeeper said who is accompanying you jibrail said muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam the gatekeeper said has he been called Jibrail said, yes. Then it was said to the Holy Prophet or then it was said, he is welcome. What a wonderful visit this is. Then I met uh, Prophet Adam and greeted him. And he said, you are welcome, O son and prophet. Then we ascended to the second heaven. So this was what is what happened in the first uh, heaven. He met Prophet Adam and then he ascended to the second he heaven. It was asked, who is it? Jibrail said. Um, uh, Jibrail said, Jibrail. Uh, it was said, Who is it with you? He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was asked, Has he been sent for? He said, Yes. It was said, He's welcome. What a wonderful visit this uh, his is. Then I met Prophet Isa and Prophet Yahya, who said, uh, alayhi, uh, alayhi uh, who, uh, You are welcome, O brother and a prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we ascended to the third heaven. It was asked, who is it? Jibrail said, Jibrail. Um, it was asked, who is with you? Jibrail said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was asked then, has he been sent for? Jibrail said, yes. It was said, he's welcome. What a wonderful visit his is, meaning the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he added, there I met Prophet Yusuf and greeted him, uh, alayhi salam, uh, and greeted him. And he replied, you are welcome, O brother and a prophet. Then we ascended to the fourth heaven and again the same questions and answers were exchanged as in the previous heavens. There I met Prophet Idris and greeted him. He said, you are welcome, O brother and Prophet. Then we ascended to the fifth heaven and again the same question and answers were exchanged as in the previous heavens. There I met and greeted Prophet Harun who said, you are welcome, O brother and Prophet. Then we ascended to the sixth heaven and again the same question and answers were exchanged as in the previous heavens. There I met and greeted Prophet Musa. Uh, salam, who said, you are welcome, O brother and prophet. When I proceeded on, he started weeping. And on being asked why he was weeping, he said, O Lord, followers of this youth who was sent after me will enter paradise in greater number than my followers. Then we ascended. So basically, this was Prophet Musa. Um, then we ascended to the seventh heaven. And again, the same question and answers were exchanged as in the previous heavens. There I met and greeted Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who said, You are welcome, O son and a prophet. Then I was shown Al Bayt al Mamur, that is Allah's house. I asked Jibreel about it and he said, 
This is Al Bayt Al Mamur, where seventy thousand angels performs day, prayers daily, and when they leave, they never return to it, but always a fresh batch comes into it daily. Then I was shown Sirat Al Muntaha, that is the low tree with the utmost boundary over the seventh heaven, and I saw its nabi fruits, which resembled the clay jugs of Hijar, a town in Arabia, and its leaves were like the ears of elephants, and four rivers originated in its root. Two of them were apparent and two were hidden. I asked Jibreel about those rivers. He said the two hidden rivers are in paradise and the apparent ones are the Nile and the Ifrits. Then 50 prayers were enjoined upon me. So he received 50 prayers. I descended till I met Musa alayhi salam. So these are the daily prayers that we have. So the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was given a gift of 50 prayers. And then, you know, so right now we have five prayers daily, but initially it was 50. And then we'll go through how they got reduced to five. I descended till I met Prophet Musa who asked me, what have you done? I said, 50 prayers have been enjoined upon me. He said, I know the people better than you because I had the hardest experience to bring Bani Israel to obedience. Your followers cannot put up with such an obligation. So return to your Lord and request him to reduce the number of prayers. I returned and requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reduction. And he, more, and he made them 40. I returned and met Musa alayhi salam and had a similar discussion. And then returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again for reduction. And he made them 30, then 20, then 10. All this time the Holy Prophet is going back, then 10. And then I came to Musa alayhi salam who repeated the same advice. Ultimately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced them to five daily prayers uh, that we do daily. When I came to Musa again, he said, what have you done? I said, Allah has made them five only. He repeated the same advice. But I said that I surrendered to uh, I surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's final order. That's how the five prayers came into place. Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was addressed by Allah. I have decreed my obligation and have reduced the burden on my slaves and I shall reward a single good deed as if it were 10 good deeds. So basically, when we do five times prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplied them by 50 already. So one each one will be 10 and times 5 is 50. So to the original number. This is from Sahih Al-Bukhari. So Alhamdulillah. Um, of course, the one key action for us is that we should try our best to uh, make sure that we are delivering the or we are praying five times prayer on a daily basis. This is how they got um, enjoined upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by him to us as his ummah. Um, okay, moving forward. وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى And certainly he saw him descent in another. So there was another place where the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel alayhi salam in the Sidrat al-Muntaha near the low tree of the utmost boundary as we read about the description in Hadith. In the Hajjannatul Mawa and here it is the garden of a board or the highest, highest Jannah is Yaqsha Sidrata Ma Yaqsha when the covered the low tree with what it covers, which is the two rivers as we read about it. Ma zagal basaru wa ma taqa. Not swerve the site and not it transgress. So the things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wanted the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to see, he saw, and there was nothing beyond um, that he saw that you know he was meant to see. لَقَدْ رَآ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى Certainly he saw of the signs of the greatest of his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْلَاتَ وَالْعُزَّى Now coming to these gods that were created by Quraysh. So have you seen the Laat and the Uzza? Now they, these gods, they have no comparison uh, uh, versus, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how come they treat them as gods? وَمَنَا uh, and Manat, the third, and the other. So all these gods that they have created. Uh, 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 is for you the male and for him the female? All these accusations that they used to make that the angels are, you know, Na'udhu angels are uh, the, the daughters and all of this uh, of Allah SWT and all these false things they used to make. Tilka is an qismatun. Uh, Ziza. This is then is uh, this is a very unfair division that they do. It's a very unfair division that they are doing. In here, illa asma un sammai tumuha antum wa aba ukumma anzal Allahu biha min sultan 
not they are except names you have named them you have just named these gods they don't mean anything to you and you know that better as well you and your forefathers not allah subhanahu wa taala has not sent down for it any authority you have created these gods so that you can make them gods and then you appear as oh we are so religious and we are you know we are uh, worshiping these gods and we are so pious and everything and then you make your own rules and you oppress people and you do corruption and you you know um uh, you try to control the caravans that used to come in makkah in trade that was the objective of creating these gods we have discussed this multiple times um in our class as well before in yattabiuna illa zanna wa ma tahwal anfus not they follow except assumption and what they desire their so they are creating laws they are creating everything rules based on what they desire and they have created these false gods so that they can be seen as religious and then everyone will follow what they say walaqad ja'ahum mir rabbihum alhuda and certainly has come to them from their lord the guidance that they continue to ignore so this is a very important point that we need to capture false gods in makka were created so people can call themselves religious and still do what their heart desires <clears throat> people reject religion today for the same reason as well right because people um why do we why do you guys think that people don't follow religion or don't follow islam whatever answers come to your mind feel free so at that point in time people used to reject the guidance and they had their own gods they could follow their desires whatever they wanted to do their heart desires and everything right now we are saying and we are trying to draw this comparison to today's world a lot of the people are not following islam a lot of the people those who are even born muslims are not following the the guidance the way it should be what can be the reason why do we think that people are not following ah there is an answer in chat sayed faiz so they can do what they want without restrictions jazakallahu khairan faiz shehroz islam tests man and tells man not to follow his desires yes and just a, a correction on shehroz jazakumullahu khairan to both of you for your amazing contributions thank you so much the point is islam tests man yes um but not to follow his desires no but to control the desires and to follow them the right way so this is one thing that i would like to add that allah subhanahu wa taala has given us outlets to follow our desires there are halal ways of doing things there are halal ways and we can enjoy our life really, really. and we can have a very healthy fulfilling content happy life by following islam in fact those people who fulfill their desires the wrong way alcohol zina all of these things shameful things they are miserable in this world eventually they get so miserable in this world because allah subhanahu wa taala is our creator he knows how should we should live our life so that we can have live it in the fullest of form we can be happiest we can be content how we feed our soul with prayer how we feed our body what should we do what should we not do to so allah subhanahu wa taala knows it so we have, we have been asked to fulfill our desires according to the halal way and there are halal outlets and those halal ways are also making us or good for us or make us successful in this world as well as in the hereafter while as sayed faiz mentioned jazakallahu khairan that um uh, because people they don't follow islam or they don't want to follow the guidance they don't want to follow the sharia because they want to do whatever they want without any restriction another answer in chat apart from that we as humans have a natural tendency to follow the masses and please others even if what they are doing is wrong brilliant brilliant answer shairoz jazakallahu khairan you are 100% right we follow the majority that's the problem um and when we follow the majority we are just following them because um everybody is doing it so while everybody is you know uh, doing shameful things everybody is sharing these things everybody is gone social media everybody is chatting everybody is going to mix gathering everybody is partying all of this why should i uh, restrict myself uh, abdul aziz you have your hand raised go ahead i think they break the religion because if they if they follow the religion then no one would buy their idols anymore and their main source of income was by selling idols so they just stopped getting money so they were just they were rejecting islam because of money amazing and yes jazakallahu khairan and this money is a desire desire for wealth so yes 100% true and they were doing that for to control the economy of makkah they used to 
actually blackmail people oh if you don't agree to us or what we are saying then we will you know make a complaint to your god and bad things will befall upon you and this will happen and that will happen so this was actually happening there they were trying to control and of course it wasn't about they knew that these stone gods have been created by themselves and they cannot do anything so this was the reason and if we apply it today it's the same thing people don't want to let go of their worldly desires it can be wealth now i've gotten into mortgage i need to get a house i need a, a the latest car and i will even i mean if i have to i'll take it out from bank regardless even if i have to pay the interest it's fine and you know so and those people when they were appearing so religious they used to pick up on a couple of things and they used to focus really on the rituals oh we are doing this so we are so religious if you look at today a lot of the big people forget the big things the big issues uh, like zina or shamefulness or the use of riba or interest and all of this and people start on small focusing on small things issues oh this thing this ingredient is this halal haram oh this how you have to wear this you know how long or short should be your dress and this one and you should do they're getting into these small things getting distracted and that's what they call religion while you know they're having all these big sins all around going through their lives we'll touch upon this point also um later on so people reject religion today as well so that they can fulfill their desires and they can live they can do corruption they can form their own laws because the moment you start following the guidance and the holy quran and the sunna or the hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have to apply the sharia law and sharia law of course will let go of a lot of things that people are enjoying today so which is why you know there is a there is a clear similarity between the disbelievers and the rejectors of islam at that point in time and the people of today who are rejecting islam not implementing it in their lives moving forward am lil insani ma tamanna or is for man what he wishes falillahil akhiratu wal ula but for allah subhanahu wa taala is the last and the first so for man i mean you, he wants everything uh, the best things like they were making these claims so the the way they are thinking is that for us it's the best things and the inferior things are for allah subhanahu wa taala this is how they are thinking wa kam mim malakin fi samawati la tughni shafa'atuhum shay'an illa min ba'di an ya'zan allah liman yasha'u wa yarda and how many of the angels and the heavens not will avail their intercession anything except after allah subhanahu wa taala has given permission for whom he wills and approves again false beliefs our gods will make intercession and this will happen and you know nauzubillah these are the females are the, the angels are females and they will make it so they were doing all sort of this creativity that allah subhanahu wa taala is clearly mentioning here that this is all false no intercession will be made except by the will of allah subhanahu wa taala ان الذين لا يؤمنون بالاخره لا يسمون ولا يسمون الملائكه تسميه الانثى indeed those who do not believe in the hereafter surely they name the angels names of females and they are making angels as females this is all to distract people from the real guidance وما لهم به من علم and not for them about it any knowledge they're just doing it they, there's no authentic knowledge of what they are saying they're just creating it out of their heads in yattabi'una illa zanna uh they follow but assumption they are making their own false assumptions they're just thinking uh, some idea comes to their mind they say it as you know it's the truth wa inna zanna la yughni min alhaq shay'a Uh, and indeed the assumption does not avail against the truth anything assumption comes from ourselves we are making we are saying oh i think but there's a fact this quran is stating facts while they are the ones who are opposing quran are saying i think ah uh, maybe it's like that and this is not true and just making assumptions fa arid am man tawalla so turn away from him who turns away and zikrina walam yurid illa al hayat ad dunya um and turns away from our reminder and not he desires except the life of the world those people who reject who were rejecting guidance at that point in time and those who are rejecting guidance today and they don't want to follow muslim practices they are just following the desires of this world zalika mablaghuhum min al ilm that is their sum of knowledge this is how their knowledge encompasses you will see you will find people 
you guys inshallah will start working you will have jobs or you will do your own businesses and you'll have your own social circle or even now when you listen to people everything is about this world everything they want to do is about okay let me how do i create wealth how can be as successful how can i reach that how can i get promoted how can i make more money how can get i get a better car how can i get a bigger house all this is all discussion that is happening in all the gatherings this is the sum of their knowledge their worldly desires inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman zalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu biman ihtada indeed your lord is he who knows best he who strays from the from his path and he knows best he who is guided allah subhanahu wa taala has knowledge of our hearts he knows what we are thinking what we are not thinking he knows who is on the right path and who is not on the wrong path this ay is also telling us not to judge people sometimes we judge people sometimes apparently a person who looks like ah oh, you know he is look like a yeah he is not practicing or something like that we don't know maybe someone is better than us in a deed while you know they not appear like that so we should not be also judgmental this decision of who is straying from the path who is on the right path who is guided is with allah subhanahu wa taala yes we can look at an apparent deed we can look at somebody doing committing a sin and we can say this is wrong and this is how they should be punished in the justice system of the world but we cannot pass judgments against people for oh he this guy is going to janna and this guy is going to hellfire for sure i know he is going to hellfire no you cannot say that this knowledge is with allah subhanahu wa taala walillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard and for allah subhanahu wa taala is whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth liyajzia allazina asa'u bima amilu wa yajzia allazina ahsanu bil husna and he may recompense those who do evil with what they have done and recompense those who do good with the best with the best things and this is how allah subhanahu wa taala will establish the justice system allazina yajtanibuna kabari al ismi wal fawahisha illa lamam those who avoid great sins and their moralities except the small faults inna rabbaka wasi'ul maghfira indeed your lord is vast in his forgiveness huwa a'lamu bikum is he is most know, knowing about you when ansha'akum min al ardi wa iza wa iz antum a jinnatun fi wutuni ummahatikum So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the most knowing about you when He produced you from the earth and when you were a fetus in the womb of your mothers when you were not even born He knows you. Fala tuzaku tuzaku anfusakum. So do not ascribe purity to yourselves only and think wrong or negative or impure about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's wrong. Hova alamu bima 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 nittaqa. He knows best. he who fears so allah subhanahu wa taala knows us inside out afara'aita alladhi tawalla did you see the one who turned away wa aqa qalilan wa akda and gave a little and mid health so these people who are rejecting the guidance and if and imagine a person who just gives away to people or just announces and then takes back because he did it for for the people around to to praise oh look at him he's so generous and he's doing so much good so a lot of the time you people see that you know they are making announcements about oh this much and i will give this much prize money or i will give this much generosity and eventually those people who don't even receive it so all of this is for public praise and you know so and he gave a little and then he withheld or took it back as well aindahu almul ghaibi fa huwa yara is with him the knowledge of the unseen so he sees like he has knowledge of the unseen what power does he have that he is doing all of this amlam yunabba bima fi suhufi musa or not he was informed with the what was in the scriptures of musa alai salam wa ibrahim allazi waffa and ibrahim who fulfilled uh, all the commitments and how how he was um, uh, uh, how he was uh, ibrahim alai salam how he used to obey all the orders Uh, uh, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah Tadiru wa uh, Diratun Wizra Ukhra. That not will bear a bearer of burdens, the burden of another. So this is a clear fact. On the day of judgment, each person will be accountable for their own deeds. No one will be bearing for another person. Wa Al Laisa Lil Insani Illa Ma Sa. And that is not for man for what except for what he strives. If he will strive for good things. we will get good things if we are striving or if we are spending our lives only for fulfilling our desires whichever way and we don't care about halal haram sharia whatever it is we just completely do 
we will get compensated accordingly. Wa an sa'yahu sawfa yura, and that his striving will soon be seen. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will make it evident on the day of judgment. It will be revealed of what he was doing, actually what he was striving for. Summa yuzahu hul jaza al awfa. Then he will be recompensed for it, the fullest of recompense. This is the most important thing that everyone will be compensated based on what they are striving for. Sometimes people are showing some things. They are trying to prove that they are like this. But in the, on the inside, they actually their, their desire or their motive or their objective is something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they are striving for. If they are striving for the right path or if they are striving for something else. If they are supporting Islam or the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they are going against it. So they will be recompensated in full on the day of judgment. وَأَنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَحَىٰ And that to your Lord is the final goal. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَزْحَكَ وَأَبْكَىٰ And that He makes one laugh and He is the one who makes one weep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so close to us. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَمَاتَىٰ وَأَحْيَىٰ And that He causes death and He gives life. وَأَنَّهُ خَلَقَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَىٰ وَالْأُنثَىٰ and that he created the pairs, the male and the female, min nutfatin is a tumna, from a semen drop, which it is uh, when it is emitted, which is from the male partner and a female partner when this, uh, the intercourse happens and you know the drop of semen is passed on. So this is, a, this is the detail of the creation, of the amazing creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how it is done. And he knows. Uh, and that upon him is the bringing forth another. This is very important ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the resurrection, the concept of us having an afterlife, we will be brought back, is something upon him, meaning upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very, very important concept that we need to discuss a little bit. And I need your attention. Believing both in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment is mandatory. It's not important. It's compulsory. Mandatory means it's compulsory. Believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment is compulsory. <clears throat> Some people say we believe in God, but we don't really believe in afterlife. Yeah, yeah we, we understand that this is ah, there's God, but we don't believe in afterlife. Some people even born Muslims are confused and they're like, really? Do you believe in afterlife? Do you believe in angels? Really? Do you think there is a heaven and earth? Uh, we don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. So, you know, this is the disbelief that people have. Um, some people say, how come there is so much injustice in the world? Uh, now, God is unjust or they when they're calling God, right? So, how come, how come there is so much um, pain in this world and there's so much injustice? By the way, this is true. Because there is injustice in this world. If you look at it, a person, uh, an honest person who is earning, 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 and you know he is he he has lived his life or he's doing a job, and then someone else came and else comes and then takes away that job. Let's say by you know because they knew someone in the company senior or older, and then you see this person was doing his job honestly. How come it is taken away? And we see a lot of atrocities that are happening across the world. The zulm that is happening in the world. One person can come and, you know, he can open fire and he can kill 50 people or 100 people. Now, the most that can be done with that person who is a murderer, let's say, who killed 50 people and let's say he got caught. Now, this person got caught. What can we do the most with him? We can only kill him and we can only take his one life. What about the other 49? Let's say he did 50 murders. What about the 49? What about the families of those who suffered? And how can the families of those who were killed be compensated? Can they be brought back or not? So these are the limitations of this world where we see injustice. So when a person believes in God or when a person believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the day of judgment becomes like a combined belief that yes, there has to be a day of judgment. Why? Because if somebody believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God, let's say, and they say that yes, God is there, but then they also say there is so much uh, injustice around this world. Then how can a God or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be unjust. It doesn't make sense because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God is supposed to be perfect. There should be no flaw and uh, having injustice or uh, uh, around is a flaw. So how come is this there? So which is why we need to combine the afterlife. We have to combine the day of judgment. And if you see the previous ayah, it is beautiful. 
ukhra and that upon him is the bringing forth another another rising or our after life allah subhanahu wa taala is taking it upon himself obviously because he is allah subhanahu wa taala he is our god he is our rab no one can enjoin it upon him no one can say that we want you now zubillah we want you to you know bring in the day of justice and where is justice and all of this he himself is taking it upon himself as an obligation that yes day of judgment will come and the people will rise again and they have to be risen again because on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa taala will have the power to punish that person who murdered 50 people and um you know to to kill him execute him he goes through the pain of death he is risen back again he brings it back to life and then again he goes back pain a pain of death and then it is done 50 times to him this power is only with allah subhanahu wa taala which is why there has to be a day of judgment and which is why believing both in allah subhanahu wa taala and day of judgment is mandatory it's compulsory and so which is why you know previously the arguments that people were saying that we just went through uh there is god but i don't know about after life and all of this doesn't hold true so this is the key action for us believing in both allah subhanahu wa taala and day of judgment is mandatory allah subhanahu wa taala will establish absolute justice in after life that's why the aya mentions that allah subhanahu wa taala him has enjoined it upon himself that there will be a rising back again and there will be an after life there will be a day of judgment we saw it in um, in in surah number 4 aya 40 as well indeed allah subhanahu wa taala does not do injustice even as much as an atom's weight so no one will be getting uh, and no one uh, you know everyone will get and we saw it in the previous ayahs as well to the fullest of what they did i hope this point is um, clear moving forward wa annahu huwa aghna wa aqna and that he enriches and and suffices he is the one who provides <clears throat> wa annahu huwa rabbu ash-shi'ara and that he is the lord of sirius was one of the uh, the stars that the arabs used to believe and they when they used to look in the sky and some believe that it is it was jupiter uh, the planet jupiter or it was a star so you know they used to see these so and they used to say it it was the brightest so they th thought that you know this is the controlling entity or this is the one who is uh, who's a god or something but that is being clarified and that he is the lord of sirius as well or lord of shi'ara as well the one that you believe is you know powerful or is the one god in your own mind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the god or allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that star or that planet as well wa annahu ahlaka ada nil ula and that he destroyed the first ad which was the nation of ad and the why it said first ad because they were thamud as well prophet hud alay salam was sent to ad and then he moved away and then he sent to be uh, um, uh, later on he settled uh, into a different place and then the the nation of samud also was there wa tamuda fama abqa and samud he spared not so not and samud as well so ad and samud they were not spared they were punished wa qauma nuhim min qabl and the people of nu before innahum kanu hum azlama wa atqa indeed they were more unjust and more rebellious we know how long they were uh, living and we know how much um, prophet nuh alai salam had to suffer and you know he he kept on preaching them for more than 900 years and still those people did not follow him wal muttafika wal muttafikata ahwa and the overturned cities he overthrew and the overturned cities which was um uh, the nation of prophet lut alai salam how they were owned overturned and you know the the grave sins that they were doing fa fa ghashaha ma ghasha so covered them what covered we know they were pelted with stones and there was a storm of stones and clay stones were thrown at them and all of them were killed those who were doing the grave sin of homosexuality um who were the nation of prophet lut alai salam whom he tried to preach but they did not listen to him Uh, and eventually they were punished by allah subhanahu wa taala fa bi ayyi ala rabbika tatamara then which of the favors of your lord will you doubt all the examples all the case studies of these past nations are in front of us hadha nadirum minan nuzril ula this is a warner from the former warners the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he's trying to do is convey the message 
of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to him. The revelation is being revealed to you. The laws are being revealed to you. You have to follow the guidance. You are being told what is halal, what is haram, how to live your life. So if you don't do and follow, don't follow this guidance, then this is a warner from the former warners. He's like the same uh, 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 group of prophets who came before and they tried to warn their people. And we saw in the previous, all the examples, those nations were destroyed and punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a warning is being given to those people who were opposing the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Azifatil Azifa has approached the approaching day. Laysa laha min dunillahi ka shifa. Notice for it besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any remover. No one can help you on that day. The day is approaching. The day of judgment. No one will be able to help each other. Afamin hazal hadithi ta'jaboon. Then of this statement, you wonder, how come you are wondering, how come you are confused about this revelation? How come you are not taking it seriously? How come this warning is not making sense to you? We have shared, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shared the, the, uh, the, all the case studies. And he's, he, and there are signs that you can go and see and watch how, you know, uh, especially the Ad and the Thamud, how they used to carve the mountains. And they have been left as signs for people to take, um, um, uh, you know, to correct their ways and take heed from. Um, and then you're still wondering on the revelation, what does Hakuna? Wala tabkun, and you laugh and you do not weep. It's a moment of weeping to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are making fun of it. You are making fun of it while you should take it so seriously that it should instill fear in your heart and it should make you weep and cry what you have been doing and what you are doing and how you have been rejecting the message. So you should not be laughing about it. Wa antum samidun. While you amuse yourselves, um, so basically you are making fun of it Actually, the fun is being made of you. You don't even know. You're trying to deceive while you are deceiving yourself. You're not deceiving the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that matter. Last ayah for today. First judul, first judul lillahi wa'budu. So prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him. When we prostrate, what happens? We go down. The ayah started, the first ayah. Uh, was about stars going down and shooting down. So this is one of the interesting linguistic connection of the Quran. Um, the ayah started with that and now it's closing with that. This is a direct action for us. Of course, this is the last ayah. Alhamdulillah, we managed to complete our study of this surah. Um, we will quickly go through the actions and then uh, we need, all of us need to make one sajda. So I will remind you towards the end as well. Um, so let's quickly go through the two actions that we discussed and we try to draw a parallel from the false gods in Mecca were created so people can call themselves religious and still do what their heart desires. This is what they used to do, the chiefs of Mecca. They have placed all these false gods and they're saying, oh, we are so religious and all of that. And they were trying to control everything, create their own laws, corrupt, do, I mean, control people, do whatever they want, uh, control the caravans that were coming to Mecca and, you know, control the economy. Because obviously, you know, they were just making their own laws, trying to benefit the most, following their desires. Um, and if you draw that parallel today as well, people are rejecting religion because they want to do whatever they want. And, uh, you know, they have the same reason. We, I mean, those people who are rejecting Islam completely or those who are born Muslims and they're not following uh, the guidance, the way it should be, then they are. They basically want to fulfill their desires. They want to go through the mortgage. They want to benefit from riba. They want to uh, do shameful things. They want to have these mixed parties with male, female, and all of this. Uh, have alcohol. All of these things that are that we are supposed to not do, and eventually they also harm us in this world. Um, you know, and not benefit us in the hereafter. People want to do, which is why. So you can clearly draw these parallels amongst those people who are opposing the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and amongst those people today even who are opposing Islam. The second action, very very important, that we went through was that believing both in Allah subhanahu wa taala and the Day of Judgment is mandatory. It's compulsory. It cannot be separated because a lot of people today say, "Oh, we believe in God, but we don't believe in afterlife." And a lot of people also say that you know. Um, uh, why is it so much injustice around the world and how come there's so much atrocities and God is unjust and nausable and all of these things. The point is that which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we go through that ayah um, uh, today, he has enjoined upon himself. He's saying that he will bring, he will make people rise again. So, and because God cannot be unjust because God cannot have a flaw, right? So 
we cannot associate it like this. All the justice will happen on the day of judgment, which is why it all the atrocities and the injustice in this world today should make us believe that there will be a judgment day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will, will form or establish absolute justice. He has all the knowledge and people will be punished the way they should be punished. We discussed an example of a killer who kills 50 people in this world. He can only be killed once and he cannot be fully compensated, right? So all of this sort of balance and justice will come on the day of judgment. Jazakumullah khairan for you guys for an amazing discussion uh, in the class today uh, on these points. Um, uh, we are ending this class, but the last ayah I just want to remind you was Ayatul Sijda. So as soon as we close the class, please make sure that you are performing Sijda. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi ka shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Purity belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praise be to him. Purity belongs to you, O Allah, and all praise be to you. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you. I beg forgiveness from you and I repent before you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll see you guys same time next week, inshallah.